Good morrow, Sanchineers. You're watching Sanchineering, and we're just continuing some chemical process. Today we're going to be talking about some ratios, some mass and mole fractions, which is very important in concepts in chemical engineering, so it's quite important that you understand this early on. So it's actually rather intuitive. So if you have some closed system, some container with some substance A and another substance B, let's say this is like carbon dioxide in water, right? That's how soda water is made, okay? So we're gonna say that this system has a total mass m and each of the components have their masses as well. So substance A has its mass, mass A, and substance B has its mass, mass B. Right, so if you add up if you add up the mass of A plus the mass of B, that's gonna give you the total mass inside the system. Okay? And we can take a look at the ratio of just one mass A by the total mass. So that is mass fraction. The notation differs in different books but it's either XA for the mass fraction of A or WA. I think I'm going to use W because in separation processes that is what is more convenient. And WA is nothing other than the mass of substance A, species A, divided by the total mass of the system, which is going to be the mass of A divided by the mass of A plus the mass of B. Right, it's a fraction. You're just simply dividing the substance mass by the total mass. That is why it's called the mass fraction. And we'll see why this will be useful. And of course, we can also define another quantity, the moles. There's also moles. Remember moles, Avogadro's number? So the total moles is going to be N, and the quantity moles A, substance A, will be Na and for substance B will be NB. So very similarly, the mole fraction or the mole ratio is going to be nothing other than, again, these also differ, so I'm going to use uh, XA for mole ratio for liquids and y, uh, yeah, YA for vapor. So this is the liquid mole fraction and this will be the vapor mole fraction, okay? So this is nothing other than the moles of substance A divided by the total moles. And notice how these are mole fractions, which means that the total has to be one. So in other words, XB has to be NB divided by n. So if, if I sum up if I sum up the mole fraction of A plus the mole fraction of B, what will I get? Well I'm gonna get the moles of A divided by n plus the moles of B divided by n or simply Na plus N B divided by N and N A plus N B has to be n, right? Just how the mass of A plus the mass of B has to be the total mass. The moles of A plus the moles of B has to be the total moles. So therefore, this is going to be n over n, and this is going to be 1. Okay, so the total moles of a system, the total mole fraction of a system has to be one. It's nothing other than the same concept as if you have two fractions. This is a third, and this is two thirds, two thirds. They have to be one. One third plus two thirds equals one. It's a mole fraction, so it's simply a ratio. So that means you don't have to know both XA and XB. If you know XA, you can simply say that XB is nothing other than just one minus the mole fraction of A. 
Okay, this will be extremely useful later on, but it's very, very important that you fundamentally understand this. All right, so that's it for this video. Next, we're going to do some more relationships.